Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. And in Saturday night's special OVA event, we're going to be doing a special installment of Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? You can say this is part 17 if you like. I call it part 17, but I also consider it to be a bit of an OVA. Now, the reason for this part is because I wanted to give you guys a little bit of closure. The reason being is because while I do want to continue this series into the Boruto era, while the story of Boruto is still being written and there are a lot of things that are still being fleshed out, I don't have any intentions on continuing this series in the foreseeable future. Much like the Naruto Yokai series, this will be one of those stories that I continue off and on at my leisure whenever the opportunity presents itself and I can add something that's impactful to the story. But this isn't going to be something that I continue on a regular basis. But still, I do want to leave you guys with something so that you'll have the foundation for the story going into the Boruto era, such as who the main children will be, their powers, their abilities, and things of that nature. I want to say thank you to everyone who has supported Power Core Productions and who have been a fan of this series from its early beginnings down to its final conclusion for now. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. For Naruto, finding balance between being a ruler, a Hokage, and a father could be easier said than done. It's already tricky enough when you're trying to balance responsibility with one or maybe two children, but how about ten? And how about six wives to go along with it? Naruto's life has not been easy or for the faint of heart. Not because everyday challenges are difficult, but rather it's just a new adventure around every corner. But we're getting a bit ahead of ourselves. You're here for the true thought-provoking questions. What was Naruto's life like after the end of our story? How did Naruto reconcile having multiple love interests? Well, after a brief conversation among the women in question, it was decided that if Naruto's love could be shared, why not? Now, this isn't your typical harm story. This wasn't a matter of Naruto simply being so great and epic at everything he did that he just charmed and swooned every girl that could or would want to be with him. No, but kind of yes. You see, Naruto was in a special situation. Not the situation your average shinobi or hero would find themselves in. You see, Naruto had effectively saved two different worlds from ultimate destruction. From Luis's world dealing with the powers of the ancient dragon of terror. And from Naruto's world, he had defeated Madara Uchiha, even after he had absorbed the power of the Ten Tails into himself. Because of this, Naruto was seen in a high regard among both of the worlds, and for the women that were vying for his affections and attentions, he had played such a profound effect in their lives that the idea of sharing him wasn't so bad. Of course, it's not to say that everything was going to be easy. Even for a regular marriage, nothing ever was. But even still, it was a compromise that everyone was willing to get on board with if not for anything, simply because they truly had a love and desire for Naruto. Each girl in their own way had been affected by Naruto in their lives, and it had gotten to a point where they genuinely could not imagine a world where Naruto wasn't in it. So the compromise was made. 
the girls would all take Naruto as their husband. And they would try to work together and coordinate amongst each other to help ease the load that would be on Naruto's shoulder. In a sense, what they were asking could be considered the ultimate form of selfishness. But Naruto had such a big and loving heart, he could never hurt or say no to any one of them. And because of this, they wanted to show their appreciation for that by trying to lighten the burdens that Naruto may have to face with having such a daunting task. As such, each girl waited, and they allowed Naruto to court them. Naruto taking a time to gain a deeper understanding of each girl he was going to be taking care of. With Luis being her familiar and all, and having been with her for about the longest amount of time, the two already had a deep-seated bond, one where they truly understood one another and were connected, not just because of the contract formed between them, but due to their relationship and experience. For Henrietta, she had gotten through some rough times in her life, and it was thanks to Naruto, along with Talbata. Tefania found her acceptance through Naruto. Hinata, she had always had feelings for Naruto, and Naruto was now taking time to acknowledge those as well. Because of this, as Naruto took time to get to know each girl, their weddings were planned accordingly. Each one was unique and of its own nature, according to each girl's specific needs. Each one was done with class and with dignity. And before long, Naruto found himself being the proud husband to six wives. But now, as you all are probably waiting for, these are the children that were fathered by Naruto and his family. First with Luis, their daughter, Charlotte Le Blanc de la Valerie Uzumaki. A mouthful of a name to say the least. She was aged 13. Her affinity, that being her magic type, are void or personal magic if you will, and she inherited her father's chakra nature for wind. In terms of her personality, she is a hybrid mixture of the two. She has Naruto's impulsiveness and energetic spirit, but she also has the short temper of her mother. This leads to her having rather sparky and emboldened outbursts. While her power can be wild and hard to control, when it comes to her overall skill, while many would say she follows in the footsteps of her mother, it's actually a showing of her latent talents. What she's talented at, she's not entirely sure, as she doesn't know what career path she wants to walk down. Does she want to follow the career of her father, the shinobi, or of her mother, the aristocrat? This is something that she has to deal with, being the child of beings from two different worlds, trying to figure out what path she wants to follow. Next, the children from Naruto's second wife, Siesta Uchiha. First, his oldest son, Mordecai Uchiha Uzumaki, age 12, affinity, fire and wind, chakra nature, fire, lightning and wind. Next, their youngest daughter, Mikoto Uchiha Uzumaki, age 9, her affinity, fire, chakra nature, fire and water. Now, as you know, in this story, Siesta is the descendant of the Uchiha clan. And following the events of the 4th Great Ninja War, Siesta took to a short training trip with Sasuke in order to hone and grow her skills. However, she never aspired to be a warrior in her own right. She merely wished to understand the power that she had been blessed with and inherited, and she wanted to serve as an asset for Naruto. Not only when it came to household chores or when it came to looking after the children, but also serving as a form of protection. Out of all of the wives, you can often find Siesta being the one to watch after all of their children in one group, 
and as such, she not only serves as a caretaker, but also as their guardian. Her skills in her own ninjutsu are adequate and fine, at least up to a jonin level standard by the time of her adulthood. Again, while she is skilled and even possesses the Sharingan, she doesn't have anything crazy or outstanding, nothing like the Mangekyo or anything of that nature. But however, her children are definitely impressive, Mordecai standing out among them. Now, when it comes to Mordecai, he has a strong attachment towards Sasuke, with Sasuke being one of the last few Uchiha alive, Sasuke takes a great liking to Morikai and Mikoto, with Mikoto being named after Sasuke's mother as a way of paying tribute and honor to her from Siesta. Morikai often takes after Sasuke in terms of his personality and in terms of his skill, and as such, they have the sort of relationship that Boruto and Sasuke have in the original Boruto timeline. Next. We have the children from Naruto's third wife, Henrietta. First, their oldest son, Lloyd de Tristan Uzumaki, age 12, affinity warrior. Following in the footsteps of his mother Henrietta, who had a magic affinity for warrior, as well as his chakra natures reflecting that in the form of warrior and wind release. Along with their younger daughter, Lisa de Tristan Uzumaki, age 8. Similarly, she follows in the affinity of water, and her chakra nature also being water, but different in having lightning release. As you would expect, these two children have the inheritance to the rulership and to the royal bloodline of the country of Tristan. So, either Lloyd or Lisa can become the next king or queen of the country of Tristan if they so choose to. Also, just to make this clear for all of Naruto's children, for all the ones who come from wives from another world, everyone has citizenship in the country of Konoha. So, whenever they travel between worlds and they arrive in Konoha, they are recognized as Konoha citizens, even if they don't stay there all the time. Lloyd is probably the most logical and most soft-spoken of all of Naruto's sons, mainly being in the form that he is not one to be prone to get into silly arguments. He is often the most logical of everyone. In terms of his personality, think of him being somewhere along the lines of Shino Aburame, while his younger sister, Lisa, tends to be the exact opposite usually following in the more goofy and carefree nature of her father. This often plays in their sibling dynamic, with Lloyd being the straight and forward sibling, while Lisa chooses to be the free and care-spirited sort of person. Also, when it comes to their fighting styles, they also differ. While Lloyd fights in a more traditional sense, that being that of a nobleman while applying the shinobi arts, Lisa leans in a lot more heavy into her shinobi side of her training in reflection to the regal and sustainable fighting style that her mother has, being that of the royal family. So, while they are polar opposites in that regard, they are still the most evenly balanced, and in similar nature to their water style, they tend to be easy going, to go with the flow, and to mold with any situation that they might find themselves in. Following this, we have the children with Naruto's fourth wife, Tifania. First in the form of their oldest daughter, Olivia Uzumaki, age 13, affinity, void magic, chakra nature, water, earth, and would release, along with their youngest son, Orion Uzumaki, age 7, his affinity, wind, his chakra nature, lightning. Of all of Naruto's children, these are the ones who I would say have the most potential in terms of their overall stamina. First, you're dealing with the likes of Naruto, who has the vitality of the Uzumaki clan running through his veins. 
of the clan who were said to have shinobi who lived very long lifespans. And then you have elves who throughout mythological lore typically live long lives in and of themselves. Now to clarify, Tifania is a half elf. Her mother was a full blood elf while her father was a human. So she's only 50% elf, but still, to have 50% elf collide with 50% Uzumaki is more than enough to make up the difference. Out of all of Naruto's children, these are the ones that you could most likely find to outlive all of their other siblings. As long as they bar any serious illness or injury, at the bare minimum, I would say that they're expected to live at least two to 300 years if they can make it that long and die of old age. And pushing their luck, they might last even longer. And along with their own lineage, as they marry and they have their own families going down the line, I could safely say that this branch of the Uzumaki clan will probably have the longest lifespan and outlive many of the other generations around them. Or at the very least, their lifelines will be extended a lot longer compared to the others among their family. Especially for Olivia in particular, as she has inherited void magic from her mother. And as you know, void magic is rather rare in the world of Familiar of Zero, as not a lot of people actually have it. So the fact that she can possess that also adds a lot to her arsenal. And since elves in nature have a strong affinity for nature, their potential for sage mode is absolutely superior to all of the other children that Naruto has. Not trying to add to any more, but that's honestly just a fact. When it comes to their overall nature sensing, and when it comes to their overall vitality, these children have the stamina and have the ability to go for years at a time. Next, we have the child of Naruto and Talbata, Naruto's fifth wife, that being an Iris Orlean de Galia Uzumaki, age 13. Her affinity, following in the footsteps of her mother, is ice magic, and her chakra nature is wind and water release. Similar to her mother, Iris has a go with the flow, melatonin, calm sort of attitude. While she has the energy and the stamina to compete with her siblings, you can often find her resting under a tree or taking a nap whenever possible. She follows in her mother's footsteps of being a long range fighter and with the aid of her father in terms of her skills, her shinobi assets help in that regard. Now, because of her relation to Talbata, she is in line to become the next queen of Galia. Of course, this is still up to her being her own choice, and there's always the possibility that Naruto could have more children with Talbata in the future. So while nothing is set in stone, Iris is the most likely candidate to become the next queen of Galia. But again, there is nothing set in stone. So, things are always subject to change when it comes to these royal relations. Also, another fact of saying, while Naruto is technically married to two queens and can be recognized as the king of the country of Tristan and of Galia, typically the power resides with both of his wives, since Naruto serves his duties of being Hokage back in his home world. While Naruto does visit his wives in the world of Familiar of Zero very often, and while he is recognized by the subjects as Lord Uzumaki and as the king of both Tristan and Galia, usually in terms of final decisions or in royal matters, they typically fall under the headship of his respective wives in Talbata and Henrietta as they serve as the main political figurehead of their respective countries. And then finally, Naruto's sixth and final wife, Hinata Hyuga. Now, you might think you already know more about these children than you think, since there's already a series about them. But you'd be wrong in this regard. For one, Boruto does not exist in our story. 
As you know, in the original Naruto timeline, Boruto's name is a tribute to Neji, as Boruto's name stands for the word bolt, as Neji in Japanese stands for screw, and that pays homage to the nameplate of Neji, who sacrificed his life for Naruto and Hinata during the Fourth Great Ninja War. However, because events of the Fourth Great Ninja War played out very differently, Neji is very much alive, so there's no need for Boruto to be named after Neji in that regard. But he does take a name from someone else, Naruto's late sensei, the sage Jiraiya. Because of this, Boruto's name in this series is Jiraiya Uzumaki, while Himawari Uzumaki stays the same. Now, in terms of his personality, he is almost similar to Boruto, although you could say that what many have called his bright nature isn't nearly as high as it is in this series. The reason being is that Jiraiya, or Boruto in this version of events, has a lot more other male figures that he can look up to and that he goes to when he needs counseling. First and foremost, there's his uncle Neji, who is able to keep him on the right track and keep him focused whenever his emotions might be getting the best of him. It doesn't mean that Boruto doesn't experience his problems, but it does mean that for this version of Boruto, Jiraiya if you will, he's able to see that he's not the only one feeling this way, as all of Naruto's children are dealing with the same issue. You could say that it almost becomes a running joke as they all bond over it. Instead of trying to gain his father's attentions through pranks or cheap antics, he simply fights to strive and improve himself. Now of all of Naruto's children, the main rivalry is actually among three of his sons, that being Mordecai, Jiraiya, and Loy, as all three of them are basically vying to be the top dog of the Uzumakis in terms of the boys. While the girls' rivalry isn't nearly as intense, it can be to a degree at times. Also, it's not just Neji that Jiraiya seeks counsel from, it's also Nagato Uzumaki. Remember, Nagato was able to reform and change his ways and be revitalized back to his youthful vigor in this version of events. He and Conan basically serve a similar role that Sasuke does and that they pretty much go around the shinobi world righting any wrongs wherever they can. So they serve in that capacity. But because Nagato and Naruto have a good relationship, Nagato also helps in Jiraiya's training as a way of paying homage to his late sensei Jiraiya and trying to make amends in that regard. Now, I know that a lot of people want to have Nagato and Conan have a child themselves, but I went against that and I'll briefly explain why. My reason being is that Conan originally had feelings for Yahiko, and Nagato never once shows any signs of having romantic feelings towards Conan, so I'm not going to push it simply so that they can have a child which again wouldn't even inherit Nagato's Renegon because the Renegon that Nagato has isn't one that he was born with. Again, not that their child wouldn't be powerful, but it just doesn't make sense for their child to exist. So instead, they serve as an aunt and uncle, if you will, to the Uzumaki children, in particular to Jiraiya, who Nagato has the closest affection for. Now, Naruto and Nagato have had discussions on what should happen if he were to ever die and his Rinnegan needed to be given. There have been talks about who should take Nagato's Rinnegan. Again, his Rinnegan is a regular Rinnegan, not like Sasuke's Rene Sharingan. But still, a Rinnegan is a powerful tool to have in one's arsenal. It has been talked about for Jiraiya to inherit the Rinnegan next, or if Jiraiya can't handle having two Rinnegan despite having the Uzumaki genes, he's more than capable of having one Rinnegan eye. So in the event that Nagato is ever killed or seriously wounded and he has to pass on his Rinnegan, he would like to give either both Rinnegan to Jiraiya or give one Rinnegan to Jiraiya 
and give one Rinnegan to Himawari, assuming Himawari follows the path of a shinobi. If not, then the Rinnegan would be in Jiraiya's care as a way of helping him out and again paying homage to the late Toad Sage Jiraiya of the Sages. However, there is one more couple I want to introduce you to, and it's a couple that I was teasing for a bit during the tail end of the series, that being the couple of Konohamaru and Kershe, that resulting in their son, Ichiro Von Anhalt Saratobi, age 7, his affinity, fire, and his chakra nature, fire. Now, this is a relationship that happened mainly due to circumstance, but it's one that I'm more than willing to welcome. For one, outside of the already established harem that we have with Naruto, this is a relationship that I think could blossom in its own way. The main reason of how it formed was that Konohamaru, after meeting Kershe during the events of the 4th Great Ninja War, basically developed a major crush on her. But because she lived in another world, she did however tease for Konohamaru to come pay her a visit, and that's exactly what he did. Of course, following the events of the 4th Great Ninja War, the Ninja World and the World of Familiar of Zero were basically welcomed to one another. Both Talbata as well as Henrietta, being the respective leaders of their countries, wanted to form an alliance with Naruto's world, and with Naruto serving as the middleman, with Shikamaru's help as well, as ambassador, the two worlds would form an inter-world alliance, that being the countries of Gallia and Tristan have formed an alliance with the allied shinobi forces. Essentially what this means is that if a threat that could affect both of their worlds or a big enough threat in general were to ever happen and occur, if either side can provide aid for the other world, then they will do so happily. Overseeing all of these arrangements, Konohamaru would use this as a chance to follow behind Naruto whenever he was visiting between the worlds. Of course, while he was trying to be there on official business, he would take the time to visit Kershe whenever he had the chance. Eventually, the two would develop a romance of their own, which would result in Kershe marrying Konohamaru. Now, this creates a unique dynamic, as Konohamaru is a member of the Saratobi clan, and Kershe is a child of an aristocratic family who are nobles of great wealth and fortune with the product of their child kind of serving as another form of the unity between the two worlds, not just all of Naruto's kids. And if you're wondering about Ichiro, he basically has an inheritance in two different worlds. Seeing as how Kershe is an only child, her son has the direct lineage to be the next one next in line to have the inheritance of the Van Alahant family, and because he's a member of the Saratobi clan, he also gets the benefits of being in that clan as well. Ichiro's dynamic is mainly in the sense that he plays the little brother role to Mirai Saratobi, which is Asuma's daughter that he had before he died in the fight against the Akatsuki. So Mirai watches over Ichiro whenever he's in the Naruto world, whenever he's visiting in that regard to be with the Saratobi clan or anything of that nature. So that's kind of the dynamic that we have going on there. But Ichiro is another child you could see playing a role in the story. And for the most part, I've mainly divided the children into two groups. There's the Boruto group, or the Jiraiya group if you want to call it that, and the Himawari group. Now, the Himawari group are the group of children who will just be entering the academy when our story begins, while Jiraiya and his group will be leaving the academy when the story begins as they start their careers as shinobi. So those are kind of like the two groups of kids that you'll be seeing in the story going forward. But all in all, this concludes this part of the story of Naruto Tale of Two Sages. What if Naruto was Luis's familiar? All in all with this part, I wanted to establish what the next leg of the story would look like going forward. 
with some of the characters that you'll see along the way and getting you a chance to be familiar with a few of the aspects of what the story will look like going forward. I do want to take the time once again to say thank you to everyone who has been a huge fan of this series, one that I felt was unique and unorthodox in the sense of it being a story using an anime that while it has its popularity isn't often used in what if storytelling and seeing how much you guys were receptive to a familiar of zero story you can definitely count on there being more stories with familiar of zero going forward in the future but all in all thank you once again this concludes today's video i'm javon harrington with power core productions and podcastings signing off and i'll see you next time